Okay. It's Watch Me Work. It's five o'clock on what day is it? Audrey? Wednesday, May 13th. Oh, May 13th. What are all those photographs in back of you? I... <laughs> My partner and I take pictures of ourselves every single day. Here he is painting his nails today. <laughs> <laughs> so that's up there. That's so great. That's it's so fun. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's really fantastic. I love it. Thank you. I love it. Um, okay, well, it's Watch Me Work. It's Thursday, the 13th of May. It's um, Stevie Wonder's birthday. And uh, yay! And uh, we're here, we're doing Watch Me Work, where we spend time talking with you about your work and your creative process. I'm SLP, Susan Larry Parks. I'm the Master Writer Chair of the Public Theater. We've been doing this show for 11 years, mostly in the lobby of the Public Theater, public theater. where we've been, have been supported by the Public Theater and more recently, Howell Round, who has helped us live stream and create a uh, uh, live stream while we're doing it live in the public theater and recently of course they've come on board to help us create this beautiful virtual community with you guys what we do is we write together or work together someone was texting me yesterday going oh i'm not a writer can i join it's any kind of work you do if you are a gardener if you are an architect, if you are a musician, uh, yesterday I was playing my guitar. I had it on mute, which is really fun. Um, anything you do, writing, whatever you do, uh, you do your work. We do it together. We work together for 20 minutes. And then we talk about your work and your creative process. What we, we have about 40 minutes to do that. What we don't have time to do is talk specifically about something you're writing but we do have a lot of time to talk about your work and your creative process, which allows us to keep the conversation open and accessible to everybody. So if you have a, if you have a question at the end of the 20 minutes work period, Audrey's going to tell you how to get in touch. Yes, I will. So if you're in the Zoom, uh, what you'll do is you will click on the raise your hand button in the participant tab, likely at the bottom of your screen if you're on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. Um, and if you have trouble with that, please feel free to shoot me a chat. I will do my best to help you out um, with that. Um, if you're watching this stream on HowlRound.tv, you can actually tweet at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Or you can tweet at the Public Theater, which is at Public Theater NY, or you can go into the Public Theater's Instagram um, and ask questions there. And that's it. Right. All right. We're going to get started. Um, and uh, we're going to work together for 20 minutes and then we're going to talk with you about your process. Here we go. Boom. <laughs>
All right. All right. There we go. There we go. That was 20 minutes of work. For, you know, so uh, now we got questions. Who's got some questions or things they want to have a conversation about? Anybody? Everybody? Everybody? Somebody. I don't see any hands raised. Oh, we got one. Well, I was going to say we could sit in silence. <laughs> um, Lore or Lori, are you with us? Oh, yes. I am. Hi. 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 Hi from France. Oh, right on. <laughs> um, so my question is a little, maybe a little off topic because I'm not a, I'm not a writer portrayed, I guess. Um, I do translate books, but that's oh, cool. a side job. Um, I'm a therapist oh. and I'm working on a, on a program like on a six month online program that will end in an in-person workshop in Japan next oh, year. Oh, wow. And uh, <laughs> yeah, many different things happening. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one of the aspects of this program is that I'm gonna have people write um, stories about their life and mm -hmm. about nature. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will share them when we'll meet together. Uh, and my, my question is this, um, I'd be curious to have your ideas or your insight, um, because I, I come from a family of writers, and so uh, the act of writing was never, like, scary to me. Um, I, I write, and it's work, but I don't have to do the extra work of getting over the fear of it or my, you know, lack of self-esteem around what I'm writing or whatever it is. Um, and I'm wondering how I could, if there was any things that I could do that would be a good um, warm up for people before I start having them write stories um, to kind of get over that hurdle of putting words on paper. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that, you know, it's not going to be about critique anyway, because I, I don't speak Japanese okay. well enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But it's more about, you know, like getting them to kind of start putting themselves on a piece of paper and like, you know, getting over the hurdle of, of um, anything that might be in the way, like, you know, traumatic school experience or whatever it is that uh -huh. happens. That Uh-huh. Uh -huh. It's, uh, do you pronounce your name Lori or Lor? Lori? Sorry? Lor. 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 Yeah. Um, it's interesting because you, uh, I mean, you, you know your students well, right? Do you? Yeah? Uh, no, I know some of them. Um, I'll be taking the group, like, you know, I'll be, obviously, after six months, I'll be knowing them. Mm -hmm. But I know the, um, their teacher, their, the head of the school. It's uh -huh. a polarity therapy school. It's like a whole different thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, I know some of them. I don't know them very well. Uh-huh. Well, so you don't know if they have any traumatic school experiences? No, no, no. <laughs> it's like, no, it's not like a specific thing. Right. It's just right. like, okay. you know, how to kind of um, get them into that, into that thing of, of being able to put themselves on paper. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I would just encourage them to write. I mean, because we, we, you know, assuming that they would have some difficulty doing it mm. is going to encourage them probably to have a little bit of difficulty. <laughs> you see what I mean? You see, I mean, you don't no, have, no. you say you don't have difficulty. I'm not going to assume, I'm not assuming that anybody who comes to visit during Watchmen work has any difficulty writing. I yeah. just would think they ha might have questions about process, you know? Yeah. Um, but once we start assuming that somebody that we don't know is going to have difficulty doing something, then, and we've got to say, okay, so you're going to start writing. It's going to be hard, you know? But I mean, already people are like, oh, no, it's hard. Instead of um, you're going to start writing. For sure. Yeah. You no, know? it's right, just right. I know that some of them are really not used to, to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, but but that's OK. That's OK. I mean, I mean, I, I honestly think if if the, the less we we encourage the ideas of difficulty, the fewer the few the fewer problems they might have. And as they come to you and they might say, it's hard, I can't sit down. Then you address their specific problems. If they say, I, I, have, trouble sit if I have trouble sitting down and focusing, great, you say, use a timer. 
you, you see what I mean? So we, we yeah, 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 no, totally. What Thank they do, or um, or or my children are in the house all the time, and and my apartment's very small, and I can't, you know, find a spot. Mm -hmm. you could say, um, if libraries are open or coffee shops are open again at that time, you know, maybe go to a coffee shop or wake up early or stay up late and find the time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I want to write like a, a great writer and I don't feel like I write like a great writer. I mean, these are specific problems that they might come to you with, right? Yeah. You can say, again, just lower the bar, write about yourself. Yeah. It's going to be great. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I mean? Thank you so, so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I would, I would just be specific, like start by just saying, write, have fun, you know, yeah. write a page by tomorrow or whatever the deadline is and then if they come to you with specific problems then we can address their specific problems they might not have any they might be like you yeah. you know like boom it's easy um or it, it's or <laughs> honestly it's, it's easy but you know it's not you know it's not a, it's not a it's not a struggle yeah um, yeah 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 like some yeah. people like some people exercising you know some people like you know i like to go outside and run around and do stuff, you know, or go to the gym or whatever. So it's easy for me, you know, it's easy for yes. me to get outside and be active. Some people are like, oh, they would not go to the gym ever, you know, and it's just a different <laughs> way of life, you know. Um, yeah. Um, but we, we, you start from wherever they are. And when you want to put ideas in there, realize that you as a teacher are putting ideas in their head. And just be very mindful about yeah. the ideas that you're putting in their head and, and address their problems specifically, you know? Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm interested too much. Also, because I know that I'll, I'll be, I have a translator. And so, oh, you know, cool. some things, the communication is going to be a little, not as easy as it would be here or, or it would be in another class. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's great. It sounds like a great program you're, you're, you're doing. I think it's going to be, in, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Lots yeah, of and, stories. And, and, and then we'll meet. When do you get and, together? When do you get together with them? Uh, fall of 2021. Oh, the fall. Then, oh, great. After the Olympics. Yeah, yeah after the Olympics. And then <laughs> while they're writing, they'll also be working on a piece of fabric of like oh. um, making um, a quilt oh, piece. Oh, wow. And then we'll oh, make wow. a quilt together and tell stories. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Wow. It's going to be, it's going to be cool. Yeah. It's very cool. It's cool already. Wow. Oh, what a beautiful <laughs> project. You. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for coming to visit. Thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Yeah. Oh. So nice to meet you. Yeah, I know, right? I, I, so cool. It's just such a great community we have. Um, up next, we've got Rebecca. All right, Rebecca. Go for it. Hey, SLP. Um, hey, Rebecca. Hi. Good to see you, Rebecca. <laughs> good to see you, yeah. too. Um, so I'm so happy this is happening on a daily basis. My Mondays all got away from me for, you know, you got a little busy. Yeah. You used to come yeah. and hang out with us in the public theater. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm coming to the end of the piece I've been working on for a very long time. Yay. Um, and I have a question about, um, time mm -hmm. in the piece. I, decided to set I've set it up so that it jumps decades mm -hmm. and between a couple or three lives mm -hmm. and um and the 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 conceit is that there's an ever present now that these past actions are um protecting or affecting and I'm just a little worried about too many time periods and how to um, what sort of what the reader can manage um, with the jumping between time periods. Um, and this isn't science fiction, it's it's you know nonfiction. Um, and I was wondering if you have any thoughts about that or um, and yeah, about sort of using time as, as almost as a character uh, in the piece. So you've got Rebecca three time periods plus the present or? 
um, in the we have a present from when I started writing. So that's a little while ago now, but uh, yeah. So there's, there's three time periods. Um, there's the time period that, and I think of the, I think of the uh, people I'm writing about as characters at this point, even, even though it's, it is nonfiction. Mm -hmm. um, so there's the narrator, which would be me. There's mm -hmm. um, my uh, father mm -hmm. as he's dying. And then there's mm -hmm. his best friend before he's died, before he's been killed. And mm -hmm. so there's like 2000, 2003 ish, 2004 ish, 2017 ish, and then mm -hmm. 1937. Okay. So, th so three time periods. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And, and I, I think, I think, um, I think it's completely, you know, I mean, remember, we're in a, we're in an age where we, we multitask, you know, Rebecca, mm -hmm. we, we is, you know, we have a lot of multiple screens going, you know what I mean? Um, I think we as a, a species can handle that sort of thing. I think if you connect it story wise, you'll make it more enjoyable for the reader. You know, mm -hmm. if they're stories, that, I mean, it sounds like these stories have something to do with each other. If you make it like they don't have anything to do with each other, then it might be a little more difficult. But I think that because they have, they're, they're interconnected, um, then time, the different time periods, while very important, is not uh, something that's going to keep us from getting into the story at all, it doesn't sound like. These people know each other they're you and your father related to each other by either blood or or you know friendship um and i, I so i think the time period isn't gonna be make it more difficult i don't think so at all it's just my opinion but you know um and i think certainly there's a lot of fiction that you know does that a lot so i think i think it's totally sounds great Thank Sounds you. Gorgeous. And, and congratulations for, for finishing. Yeah. Well, I gave myself a deadline finally. And there you go. There's nothing like a deadline for <laughs> finishing. Nothing like a deadline. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Very so. good. Good for you. Thank you. Very good. I'll, I'll uh, let you know how it goes. Yeah. Well done. So, how many, how, when are you going to be finished? Finished, do you think? It, it should actually, so by finished, I mean a second, a good second draft that I can uh -huh. send out for people to read. Mm -hmm. um, probably the end of next week. Fantastic. Yeah. Well yeah. done. Good yeah. job. Yay. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. We're all very proud of you. We're, we're part of your squad. Oh, that's excellent. All that's these big squad. From all around the world. Yeah, big squad. Hey, yeah. That's how we roll. <laughs> that's right. Congratulations, Rebecca. Really well done. Congrats, Thank Rebecca. Yeah. Thank Thanks you. for being here. All right. Up next, we've got Julian. Go for it, Julian. Hey, Julian, with another fabulous background. You look oh, like you're on The Simpsons today, man. I am. <laughs> yeah, it is The Simpsons. <laughs> Fantastic. How are you? Well, happy to see you, man. You too. Um, I have a, a quick question. I'm so I'm, I'm writing. Uh, I'm trying to write a memory play for the very first time, uh -huh. um, or my spin on the memory play. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm wondering if you have any tips or ideas on how to sort of jog old memories. Um, that are like deep within the subconscious of some sort. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Uh, is there? How do you bring that to the to the front? Like your memories, your personal memories. Yeah, like like I'm trying to think back of a time, and I'm trying to remember uh, sort of what happened, but I'm trying to also not skew it with because there's that whole that whole idea that you can't ever really remember something; you only remember it the last time you remembered it. Uh -huh. So I'm trying to get at the core of it and not just try and remember a memory with my judgment or perspective as I am now rather than before. Do you, is there anything that you do? Do you do anything like that? Or is there a way to- oh, I, uh, You know, my imagination, my imagination muscle, or as my son says, my imagination <laughs> is so strong that memory, imagine, you know, you know, I remember something, but who knows when I am fabricating? <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I'm not, I'm not, you know, you're very, um, what do you call it? You know, you're a purist, Julian. I'm not, I'm a, like a fabricator. And 
um, if I go into the memory vault and I remember it in a way that I remember it, that's how I'm remembering it. The purity of the experience is, uh, uh, I'm not as interested in, in that. So I don't have any, 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 any tricks. Uh, you, you can't, it's like, it's like, what were you like when you were five, you know? So start ripping your skin off. You know what I'm saying? Peeling yeah. your skin away, Julian, and seeing if you can get to that, that person you were when you were five. Right. Um, or maybe what was the paint like? The first layer of paint on the wall. And, you know, I mean, that, that, that you might find, but I think um, the memory, uh, let's see, there's the, the thing as it happened, but then the layers of remembering, I think are part of it. Right. And do not, should not be dismissed as simply some time or some, you know, viewpoint from time. Yeah. I think that's a part of it. So yeah. I think that, that you can ask yourself, Am I, maybe as you remember it, am I trying to hide something from myself? Mm. You know, yeah. um, is this really how it happened? But I, I, I don't think you need to like start scolding yourself for not being able to see it as it really happened when you were five years old or seven years old or whatever. Okay, cool. You know? Yeah, that's helpful. Actually. Yeah, yeah. So be gentle with yourself. That's the other thing, you know, be kind to yourself. Memories are, are precious things. And, you know, I mean, I'm not, and I'm not saying lie, you know, make up shit and just start lying. I'm not suggesting that, but I am saying that if you remember some, yeah, that's how it happened when I was five. Um, that's close enough. Yeah. Cool. You know? That's great. Thank you. Someone else might have another answer, but that's <laughs> no problem. That's my yeah. Thanks, Julian. Nice to see you. Yeah, and the Simpsons. That's really great. Yeah. <laughs> Maria, the Devil's Interval, everybody. Oh. Maria, the Simpsons, the Devil's Interval. Just wow. so we know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. Maria, the <laughs> Simpsons. Oh yeah. Anyway. Wow, Serena. You're up next. Great. Hi. Hi, Serena. Hey, how are you? Um, so I had a question about writing outside of your comfort zone. Um, I feel most comfortable writing plays, which I'm still figuring out. But I'm just curious. Um, I have an idea for another concept, and I'm not sure if it's going to fit into a play. And mm -hmm. since you've written books and mm -hmm. um, TV and different genres, mm -hmm. how do you know your, like the medium for your idea? Yeah, that's good. Um, can you see it? Can you see your idea? Can you kind of get a glimpse of it? Yeah, I feel like it's more of a film than a play. And it probably is. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? If okay. I start seeing an idea and it's like on a big screen with like landscapes and everything, then it's probably a movie. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, sure, it could be a TV show. Um, TV shows come to me in like segments, you know? Uh, but uh, if it's a big landscapey kind of thing, it's probably a movie. If you feel like it's probably a movie, then it probably is. Okay. And so I guess then writing out of that comfort zone, I've never why written that, film. Why, why, are you, why are you not comfortable writing movies? I don't know. I guess I've always just written plays. So understanding that format and Right, right. You know but this mean? is what Laura, this is the same thing that Laura, Laura, we, wh why put that trip on yourself, yo? Yeah. You know what I mean? That is your comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just new. It's just different. It might yeah. be in your comfort zone. It might be, why, why can't it be in your comfort zone? You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just new. So what's great about something being new is you can approach it with beginner's mind and you can approach it with a certain amount of enthusiasm and you can maybe, I don't know, there's some books out there, I think, you know, about how to write a screenplay. Yeah. Right. You, maybe you have one already and um, they're fun and your screenplay can be, you know, if you want it Hollywood style, 120 pages, you know, certain things happen, uh, certain act breaks and things like that, which make it fun to write. Mm hmm. Okay. You know, dive and I'm, in, enjoy your, enjoy yourself. It's like, uh, 
you, you know, you don't have to lay a trip on yourself about how it's going to be difficult or uncomfortable. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely. And I think a follow up to that, I also wanted to try to write more comedy. And it's also something that I feel like I'm blocking myself because I just don't write that way or haven't at least. Are you, why do you want to write more comedy? Do you I tell just, a lot of jokes? Some of my plays have like, no, not jokes, but like dark comedy. Like I, a lot of my plays have that kind of undertone. And I've heard like, oh, this, a lot of commentary I've gotten was like, oh, that play is really funny. It wasn't intended to be, but I kind of wanted to explore that a little bit more. Um, so yes, you have, I don't know. You have, permi you have permission. Like, you can make yourself a couple of cards. Films um, and comedy yeah, hard. <laughs> yeah, right. if you have like, in, do you yeah. have any index cards? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Serena, so you got some index cards. Are they are they large? Let me see if I can. Are they like big like this? Are Not that half? big, like half of that size. Great. Okay, great. Yeah. So what color are they? Are they white? Are they colorful? Or? White. Great. Okay, so take two of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and write yourself a couple of cards. So like, do you have a driver's license? I do. Great. Okay, fantastic. So you get these two cards and one card it says you have this, this hereby gives me permission to write a screenplay if I feel like it. Great. And stick it somewhere where you can see it and maybe decorate it a little bit. Make it fun. And then you have the other index card. This, I hereby give myself permission to write comedy, whatever that means. I don't know. Yeah. Lean into my dark comedy thing that I really want to explore and, and decorate that one and put it up somewhere on the wall or put it in your pocket or your purse or your backpack or whatever. You need to, a couple, you need permission. It, it's, it's, you're allowed if you want to. Yeah. You're allowed. You know what I mean? Sounds mm -hmm. weird. I know it sounds weird. No, no, that's cool. That that's helpful. No, you don't it have is. to necessarily, or, or you can go to an expensive university and get an education and get a, a diploma that's going to say, and then some professor, five and I feel thousand to million yeah. dollars later, will say, yes, <laughs> right. Serena, you can go ahead, or you can just take it for free right now. Right. And just go ahead and do it. Right. I don't have okay. a degree in in writing. But I have a lot of permission slips I decorate my room with. You know? Cool. No, I'm going to try that. Thank yeah, you. It, it sounds like you have it in you. Yeah. And if you have it in you, then let it out. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. <laughs> That's why we're here. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Serena. <laughs> that to take uh, our spouses every day, Audrey. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Noah, you're up next. Go for it. Um, so I have a question that's kind of similar and that yeah. Card's idea really helped. It's kind of a question about like giving myself permission to write. Um, Cause as a new writer, I'm not like a new reader at all. So I, I know that I have, you know the capability to write and I do want to write but I also, I keep holding myself back. So I was wondering if you have any other tips besides for the card idea, which I mm -hmm. want to try, mm -hmm. um, just about letting myself write what I want to write, but also because I, you know, obviously we all want to write something that's good and worth reading, mm -hmm. but um, holding back from, you know, like obviously it's not gonna be right on the first draft, but, you know, just le letting yourself like write those first drafts. Like, how do you, how do you do that? Uh huh. It's a great question. Um, First of all, you, again, we don't know if it's going to be right on the first draft or not. So don't lay that on yourself. Like, I'm not going to get it right on the first. <laughs> who know? Who knows? Right? Okay, you know. So you're going to allow yourself to write. I would say again, you know, this timer thing mm -hmm. for the bar. So if you allow yourself to write for, let's just say, five minutes a, a day. Can you, you think you can do that? Is that, does that sound yeah, manageable? I have a lot five, of time. <laughs> great, okay, well, I'm just, I'm just saying we're lowering the bar. Okay? okay. So five minutes a day in your, you have a notebook? Yeah. Can you journal or, yeah. or would you like to write on a specific topic? Which would you prefer? I mean, I do journal a lot. Like usually every day, I write like a page. Okay. But it's very like stream of consciousness. And I want to try, try writing more, you know, fiction and like fully formed pieces. Great. Okay, great. So why don't you write five minutes a day along the line of some story? 
So, okay. You'll go ahead, ask. Um, but I, I, I have trouble like separating that from the writing that I already do, which is very like natural kind of writing. But, like when I start trying to write anything that's like fiction or what I have the idea in my head of being like proper writing, like immediately the expectations go like way high. And then right. I'm just like, you know, I can't do it. Understood. That's why we're going to give you only five minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to start. It's like, if you do, you, are you a marathon runner? No. <laughs> great. That's great. So if you were going to run the New York City Marathon mm -hmm. 2021, right? Yeah. And you said, I want to start out training for the marathon. I wouldn't say, great, Noah, go out and run 28 miles or 30 miles yeah. and get back to me and tell me how it was, right? <laughs> I'd say, Noah, go out and why don't you run for 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. And if you have to walk a little bit, you know, walk a little bit and go back to running and walk a little bit and do that for 10 minutes and come back inside and we'll talk about it, right? Mm -hmm. So this is what we're gonna do. We're going to ask you, since you already journal, get a timer and I would, again, I, I am so big on these kinds of timers. Look, I have so many of them because they're <laughs> only, I have tons of them. They're only timers. They're not your phone. Yeah. They don't have your news feed. They don't have your Facebook thing going on, whatever the fuck. Someone's yeah. getting in touch with me. Oh my goodness. You know what I mean? They're just timers. Five minutes. You're going to sit down and you're going to start writing the story. Now, I don't know what kind of story you want to write, mm -hmm. but imagine it's, you can start with once upon a time, there was a hmm. Just start writing the story. Five, once the timer goes off, Noah, you stop. Okay. And do you recommend like, should I just only do those five minutes or like think about like plotting it out beforehand and editing it also? Try, just try your five minutes. Okay. <laughs> try it every day. Just see what it's like. If you maybe want to come back to say, oh, well, that was kind of fun. Maybe before dinner, I'll try five more minutes. Mm -hmm. Just try five minutes. Again, it's a, Imagine you're training for a marathon. Okay, I like that image. Just Thank you. it's mod, it's very modest. We're not asking for you to write, you know, war and peace or mm -hmm. da da, you know what I mean? We're just asking you to write a, a simple story, put five minutes, at least five minutes into it every day in your notebook. Okay. Okay. And I'm just excited. kind of write a just just inch along. Mm -hmm. And if that makes you your chest tight or your throat yeah. feel like <laughs> try two minutes oh okay and if that's really okay. gives you a lot of anxiety and pain try one minute mm -hmm. okay just gently gently progress along Ima again imagine that you're training for a marathon mm -hmm. if i say go out and run one mile if that's too much run a half a mile if that's too much run 20 feet mm -hmm. slowly it will build up, you will get better. You will, you'll get better. You just will, if you put in the time, mm -hmm. you know, like they say in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, no effort is ever wasted. Mm -hmm. Look, Rebecca's shaking her head because Rebecca knows she was working on that project for a, a couple of years now mm -hmm. and she's almost at her finish line. She's gonna cross her finish line next week and it was not easy what she was writing, what she is writing. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, and keep coming back here. We're going to be here every day. Yeah, I love I'm going to be here like five days a week. <laughs> I don't got nothing better to do except talk to y'all. So come on back. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Thanks, Noah. All right. Uh, but next we have Devin, and we've got about 10 minutes or actually eight minutes left. Go for it, Devin. Hi. I, this is hey, so Devin. wonderful. I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, great. Greetings to all of you. And it feels like the doctor is in. You're like a writing doctor. I'm so grateful <laughs> that I get to have a, my four minutes with the writing doctor. <laughs> Thank you so right much. Sure. Um, so I, I spoke, I asked a question last week and I, mm -hmm. I'm very Zoom shy. I don't really like talking to this little green dot, but here we are. Oh. So, so I'm grateful. Um, so I've been working on a memoir for if something that happened 12 years ago. I've been working on it for six years. Now, I do other things, you know, I teach, I, you know, I'm a mother, I do other stuff. So it isn't the only thing I've been doing, but honestly, I can't believe how long this has taken me. And honestly, a part of myself is like, you know, you just have to live in that story. A part of me is sort of in 
like you, you talked about marathon and running. I mean, I'm, I've been like in mile 24, it feels like for about a year and a half, mile 24. And um, I'm just uh, feeling a compound frustration, shame, impatience. And I just thought I'd share that. <laughs> if, you, if the doctor has any words to, uh, in response, I'd be so grateful. Welcome to the club, Jasmine. <laughs> I mean, I think I think that feeling like you're stuck in mile whatever, three, mile 24, mile 48, feeling like Jesus, feeling like, you know, if I were a legit artist, it'd be easier. You know, right? That's something, that's some bullshit somebody made up to make the rest of us feel bad. I don't know any writer and I know all the fancy writers, you know, and all the fancy filmmakers, all these fancy ass people, none of them have an easy time. They're all struggling. Everybody is struggling. It's just when they do the press junkets that they make it sound great. Yes, I came up with an idea in the bathtub and boom, there it was. I mean, it's everybody is struggling. We're all struggling. So welcome to the club. We're all struggling. Um, not that we not that we bring it on ourselves and say if i'm a real writer i have to struggle we're not saying that but we find that sure it there is some some effort involved perhaps some difficulty you know in unexpected places because we're doing other things because we're moms or parents or we have day jobs or night jobs or whatever yeah. or because what we're wrestling with or trying to untangle is tangled and untangling things might be difficult. It might be easy sometimes, you know, but it, it does require uh, effort sometimes. Not that we wish difficulty on each other, but when we have difficulty, we bring it to the table and we don't need to feel ashamed. Yeah, yeah. you're part of the tribe, Devin. You know, creative creative act the live the the act of living can be difficult. You know, we wouldn't wish difficulty on each other, right? Yeah. But but I mean, just think of the act of living. You you're a mom. You know, it's shit. You are you homeschooling now? Um, n no, because um, one is married. Oh, good. <laughs> so I don't have to homeschool him anymore. <laughs> His wife is doing that now, I guess. Ah! And, <laughs> and the, the other is uh, he's uh, he goes to Carnegie Mellon, but he's okay. here right oh, now. Great. Okay. Okay. So he's okay. taking a, like a differential equations at six in the morning. Oh, very cool. So, yeah. Very cool. So very yeah. cool. But just know that I mean, you're in mile twenty four and mile twenty. You know, just just keep inching along. Yeah. You know, okay. and, and sometimes the going is slow and sometimes the going is fast. Thank you very much, you doctor. Know? You're <laughs> Dr. Parks, thank you. You're, you're thank you, Devin. You're All you right, got about three minutes left. Yeah, we got let's see who we got. Giselle. Giselle. Hi. Um, I'm gonna show you what I made. Oh. Oh no, oh God, everything's it's, gone. Okay. It's a, wow, your background is, Look at that. That is very interesting. Your background takes over. Yeah, that's very weird. Anyway, I gave myself a permission slip and I wanted Yay! to show you not successful. <laughs> what does it say? It Read says it I us. have permission to write a TV series. It's in me and I let it out. <laughs> it has flowers and smiley faces. There you go. Flowers and smiley faces are really good. <laughs> that's fantastic. Look at you. Yeah. So my question is, um, I've, in addition to writing this TV series, I'm also writing a children's book. Oh, cool. And I think I'm at a point, I'm, I'm writing the pitch to the publishing agency. Cool. Um, but I feel like, so I, I've, I've been working on it for about a year mm -hmm. and I really want to just push it out. Like I just, I want to get, I want to be done with the project and um but now i'm like okay i don't see it's i don't see how it is relevant now it's um it's a book 
about dreams being adventures and how dreams don't have to be scary. Mm -hmm. Um, and just like all the possibilities uh, and worlds that you can participate in and visit in dreams. Mm -hmm. um, but now that we're in this quarantine and I, I just feel like um, it's not, I, it might be tone deaf maybe, um, where it's not speaking to the current time. And I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on like sending this work out to an agency when maybe it's not completely like thinking about it, it, it wasn't written during this time right so so much wasn't written during this time if giselle i mean if that's your excuse for not finishing your book you got to come up with a better excuse you know what i'm saying you know so why don't you finish your book why don't you send it out and if no publisher likes it then fuck them. Who the fuck cares, right? If they're all going to hate your book because it wasn't written during this time. I mean, we've only been in this time since like January or December, if you read, you know, the news feeds, you know what I'm saying? So if they're going to hate on your book because it wasn't written during this time or it doesn't have something to do with the pandemic, I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, they can get over themselves, right? But if it's going to make you stop writing your book because you don't think, you think that the only things that should be read during this time are things that have to do with the pandemic. I'm like, do we have to read stuff about the pandemic? We're living it. You know what I'm saying? We don't necessarily have to read stuff about a pandemic. We are living a pandemic. So maybe what you're writing about dreams and all that kind of stuff might be exactly what we need. Who knows what you need to do is you need to finish your book and stop making excuses, right? Finish your book. Stop making excuses. There are no excuses. <laughs> and if it wasn't, don't make it the pandemic's fault. If it wasn't a poor pandemic, poor pandemic COVID is like, shit, this all ain't my fault. You're blaming, you're not finishing your book on me. I'm just a little virus trying to make my way. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> don't blame it on COVID. Blame it on you. You just don't want to finish your book. You're using that as an excuse. Okay. Yeah. So don't blame it on COVID. Blame okay. it on Right, if because it wasn't COVID, it would be like your mom. My mom wouldn't approve of my book. Should I finish it? You know what I'm saying? Or my aunt Jane would not like my story. Right? I mean, it would be something. Just realize that. Yeah. So go ahead and finish your book. Send it out, and if nobody likes it, that's okay. Write your next one. Cool. <laughs> okay. Because you're allowed to finish your book, and it's very exciting. You're almost done and you want to finish it, don't let nothing stop you. Go ahead and finish it. Be proud of yourself and use the energy of bringing something to the finish line, right? To power yourself into your next project because finishing that book is going to give you a lot of energy when you start writing your TV series. Yeah, definitely. Right, because you will have shown that you can run the marathon and cross the finish line. Yeah. That feels really important. Yeah. I don't want to, yeah. I'm tired of being stuck in all these different projects at once. Right. So get unstuck. And the way you get unstuck is just to pull your ass across the finish line. Yeah. COVID or no COVID. Unless you're sick and in the hospital and all that. That's different. But you're not, I don't think, unless that background is, you know. No, thank God. Right. I'm doing well. There you go. So knock on wood and, and use your health and be grateful for your health and finish your, your dang book already. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Amen to that. All right. It's Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Giselle. All right. It's six o two. We're coming back tomorrow. We're God. coming back tomorrow. Rise. That's right. Andre, as a reminder, 3 p.m. You can sign up by 3 p.m. Eastern time every single day on the Public Theater website, and I will send you a link between 3 and 4, 30 p.m. Eastern time. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Love Thanks, you. Thanks, SLP.